I come from the entertainment industry, music in particular. And there are people all over this world who dream and visualize and see themselves as being the next Michael Jackson or the next Prince or the next huge pop star. But, and it brings them plenty of joy. But I've watched these people get older and hold on to a dream that is just not realistic anymore. You're 35, yeah. 40 years old. At sure. some point, I know it brings you joy, but you're probably not going to become a, a, a household name, an A-list celebrity. What do you tell people like that? Well, I say, I, you know, and I, I have three sons who are all in the entertainment world, so I say a lot. <laughs> um, you know, one's a drummer, one's a hip hop singer, and and one's a more of a jazz like club singer, cabaret singer, and uh, and I have a daughter, a stepdaughter, who's also a singer and an artist. Uh, only have one son who's a he's he went to the Wharton Business School and he's out there cleaning up on the financial side. But the reality is this, I and I've told this to my kids too, and I tell it to everybody: when you're focusing on fame and fortune, you're focusing on the wrong thing. Because only a few people get that, whether it's in sports, you know, like 1% of college athletes become pros. I think it's 3% of high school athletes become college athletes. And, and most pro careers are three to five years. And then, then who are you? And so the reality is you've got to focus on the enjoyment of doing what you do. I know a lot of performers who are never going to be on the Billboard 100, mm -hmm. but they're always going to be happy because they're, they're making music. They're singing. They're acting, they're dancing, they're performing in improv, whatever it is. So the reality is, you know, do it for the joy of doing it. And you can study everything you want to learn about, you know, working with promoters and working with concerts and how do you have to do this and all that. And have the, have the dream, but don't be attached to the destination because you could spend your whole life trying to get to that destination. You're now 50 years old. It didn't happen. And you had 40 years or you know, 35 years of not being happy because you were never Michael Jackson or you were never Michael Jordan or you were never, you know, whoever you wanted to be. And so, you know, not everybody is going to do that, but everybody has an opportunity to perform, you know, whether it's for weddings and bar mitzvahs and high school graduations and parties, your friends, you know, there's a million clubs. I was just watching the voice. I love the voice. Just watching the voice the other night. And, um, the guy, the country Western guy, whose name escapes me at the moment, um, he was talking about how he played all these venues, these fairgrounds in California and Indiana and Iowa for years and years and years and all the minor clubs in Nashville and on the road until he eventually made it. He said, but I had a good time. I loved performing, you know, and if you love performing, then you're going to be happy. And if you do get that break, you know, where the guy comes in and sees John Denver in a club singing or sees Elton John, you know, then fabulous. That's great. But there's a lot of people that are equally as good as all those people. Equally good. Some of them maybe even better. We yep. see them on The Voice. They're not famous yet. They're yep. 35 years old and they're incredible. And they, they're, they're still going for their shot. But enjoy the ride. The journey is what it's all about. The destination is great. The destination gives you a reason to take the journey and then enjoy the journey. I love that. I love that. Do you believe anything, any experiences in our life is wasted experiences or are they all preparing us for something that is yet to come? I think they're only wasted if they're good ones and we don't enjoy them. And if they're bad ones and we don't learn from them, you know. Oh, so hold on. I, I, I want to highlight that. They're yeah. only wasted if they're good ones and we don't enjoy them, or if they're bad ones and we don't learn from them. Did I get that correct? Yeah. I mean, oh my God, that's such a gem. Such yeah. a gem. Every, every experience you have, you were meant to have. How do we know that? Because you had them. You know, I love Byron Katie. She says, reality always wins. Reality always wins. So reality is just there. We know it had to happen because it did. Now, can I learn from it? You know, can I learn from the fact that I got divorced? What can I learn to bring into my next, my next relationship that will help me do that better? Can I learn from the time that person embezzled money from me? Oh, we need to have two signatures on any check over $1,000 that goes out of this office so she can't write herself a check for $10,000. I learned from that. You know, can I learn from 
how I did that inter intervention with my teenage son that didn't work out very well. Well, I learned I need to ask him a question, not tell him what to do. He's at that stage of life. We need to be more of a coach, you know. So the uh, every 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 experience is an opportunity for growth. Every experience. So always ask yourself the question, what did I learn from that? And everything that shows up, ask yourself the question, what's the opportunity that this is? What's the opportunity it is? You know, I was stranded in an airport one night in Chicago, in O'Hare. You know, it snows there a lot and the mm -hmm. trains get grounded. And, you know, my first response was, uh, bummer. And then it was like, wow, I'm here, all these people, I can get to know some of them. Maybe some of them could actually hire me to be a speaker sometime. I actually got a gig out of it, actually. <laughs> and so <laughs> I just started going around talking to people. I had another experience. I was in New Jersey. The same thing happened. Flight got canceled. And we're going to spend the night there. And this one guy goes, he said, the, 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 the shops are closing in five minutes, all the, you know, to buy stuff, the food and Cokes and water, whatever. And I went, I, and I like, oh, I got to get something really quick. I don't want to, you know, so I go there. And then about five minutes later, I see this guy come back. He's got like water for like 20 people and all kinds of potato chips and stuff. And I was like, oh, Canfield, you selfish son of a bitch. You know? <laughs> Here was an opportunity for you to be generous. And you went into fear. You know, so I learned from that. And then if, if I find myself in that situation, I'm going to be different, you know. So we can always learn. And, and there are some tough, tough things we learn when we confront cancer. We lose people we love. We lose our job. You know, some technology takes over what we used to do. Some new AI comes along, you know, whatever. That's going to keep happening. But can we learn? And it's always an invitation to grow, to learn a new skill to develop a new quality like patience, perseverance, courage, you know, compassion, whatever it might be. Last question for you. Sure. Say you're 50 years old. It just hasn't happened yet, whatever it is. You know, I'm from the South Bronx and I watch people who have grown up, they've stayed in the neighborhood, they've never made it out of the neighborhood. Is it ever too late? Is it ever a time where in, you spoke about us having fear based on our own past history? I know that that fear cripples people from even trying new right. Sure. But to believe that whatever it is, it hasn't happened for me. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried, and this is the best that life has rewarded, with, rewarded me with. Is it ever too late? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, we could go and I could tell you story after story of people who've changed their lives in their 50s and 60s. Um, it's never too late. I mean, I have this one story I tell about this woman. She was 55 years old, totally fat, overweight, smoker. She was a nurse. Her husband said, let's run a 10K. She said, are you kidding me? We'll die. He said, come on, let's just run around the backyard once. See how. And she, they literally laid on the ground and were huffing like they're going to die. And she said, this is disgusting. She stopped smoking. She stopped eating badly. She started running an additional lap around the yard every night until she got to where the yard was too small. Started running telephone poles, added one every day. She ran that 10K, came in last. But at 55, she started running. And I met her when she was 83. She'd run like 55 marathons, 25 ultra marathons. She was the oldest person to ever complete the uh, Ironman triathlon. She ran across the Sahara Desert. You know, I could go on and on with all her accolades. And that's not just in sports you can do that. You can do that anywhere. The problem is, and, and I understand that if you've failed and failed and failed, especially you're from the South Bronx, if there's racism involved and all that kind of stuff, it's challenging. There's no question. And to risk wanting to do it again is to risk disappointment, is to risk being frustrated one more freaking time. However, when you say you've tried everything, nobody has ever tried everything. You know, have you tried standing on your head and counting backwards from 100? No, you haven't done that. So there's all kinds of things you can try, courses you can take online. You know, if you don't have access, find some kid who has a computer and offer to teach him how to play, you know, backgammon or something for an hour on his computer. There's always some way to negotiate something to get more information, to develop more skill, to figure out how you can do something. You know, there's a lot of people have skills, but they don't actually figure out. My oldest son lives in Brooklyn and he is a drummer by trade, uh, but he also is he's good with his hands. 
So he's he builds shelves for new little boutiques that are starting to open up, you know, whatever, because Brooklyn's gentrifying right now. So mm -hmm. he can sell that, you know, and he can go and tell people, oh, you're thinking of building bookshelves in your house. You're thinking of doing this. A lot of people have skills, but they don't go out there because they don't believe doing anything will make a difference. So it's a matter of finding someone like you who's been successful, finding out what they did. Tony Robbins says success leaves clues. Success yeah. leaves clues. Somebody has left a blueprint for how to do it, whether it's to get a job locally, whether it's to be happier, whether it's to figure out how to eat better in the middle of not having a lot of money, whatever. Some people have figured it out. So you have to be willing to get off your butt and spend time doing something self-developmentally, which most people in the South Bronx never learned to do. It wasn't right. part of the culture, you know. When I taught in the black school, if you tried to get good grades, you were trying to be white, you know? So it's like, you know, there was a lot of cultural press against you, you know? And so I get it, I get it. And I don't want to discount that. But you have to push against all that if you want something more. You can't think of this, and we'll end with this. One of my formulas I teach is E plus R equals O, okay? Event plus response equals outcome. Outcomes are what we want. We want better outcomes. What you're currently experiencing is an outcome of how you responded to an early event. If you're overweight, the outcome is a result of you ate too many calories and didn't exercise enough, you know, or you ate the wrong kind of foods um, or, you know, too much stress. You never relax. So the oxytocin in your body, you know, whatever. Now, if you are wealthy, that's an outcome of how you invested time and money. If you have no money, it's an outcome of how you responded to opportunities. So if you want a different outcome, to what you currently have, think of two plus two equals four, and you're tired of four, you can't just keep doing two if the world's doing two. You have to do something different. And that requires you to get out of your comfort zone. It's, it's uncomfortable to be the only guy in the neighborhood who's reading a book. It's uncomfortable to be the guy who's going to the community center and taking a course. It's uncomfortable to get on two buses to get to community college. It's uncomfortable to do that, you know? But, you know, you read, you read, there was a movie written, there was a book written and a movie about this girl who lived in L.A. And she ended up going to Harvard. And she was in a homeless shelter with her mother. Took three buses to get to school, three buses to get home, studied at night when everyone else was asleep. And she ended up getting a scholarship to Harvard. Why? Because she was wanting to do the uncomfortable thing, which most people won't do. Three bus rides, pain in the ass, right? So you've got to be willing to do a different R to get a different O. Now the pandemic comes along and says, oh, two plus two, four. Now you got zero plus two. So now like you can't pay your mortgage, you know, there all these things are happening. So you got to do more than two. You got you to do four just to get back to where you were, which requires you to do something different. What most people did, they just hunkered down, got scared, went inside, maybe wore a mask, maybe didn't, maybe got pissed off at the government, whatever it was, but they didn't get creative. It's the people who got creative, who figured out how to keep their restaurants open, who figured out how to deliver stuff, who figured out, you know, all the different things. You can look at New York, which is kind of a ghost town right now. Yep. But some restaurants are open, some aren't. Why? Some little pizza parlors are still serving. There, others aren't. Some, you know, little small businesses, entrepreneurs, are surviving when others aren't. What do they do different? Find out. Do that. You know, ask people. Hey, you're making it. I'm not. Teach me. What do I need to be thinking different? What do I need to be picturing different? What do I need to be doing different? Anyway. Uh, you, you've been uh, everything that I'd hoped you'd be and more. So thank you so much. You know, uh, as you're talking, I, I guess the best way to end this is something that you drove home in the secret again and again, which is ask, believe, and receive. If you are watching this, you should ask, believe it in its entirety, believe it unwavering and prepare to receive it. Jack, I, I can't thank you enough for, for agreeing to do this interview. I, I know that this is going to inspire and motivate and just help so many people have a mind shift. So I thank you so much for just being you and all that you have done for the last 50 years of your career. And you are a true power move maker. Thank you. Well, thank you for the opportunity. And let me just take one second to say, go to my website, jackcanfield.com. And if you type in jackcanfield.com forward slash transformation, you can sign up for free. It'll automatically sign you up for a 12 day 
download, every day you'll get a, a principle, one of my success principles. It'll tell you what it is, a little video, and it'll give you an assignment for the day to actually Velcro that, that principle into your life. So Jack Canfield forward slash transformation. It's a free offer to everyone watching. Is that the best place for our audience to, to reach you? Are you on any social media platforms? Yeah, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me uh, on YouTube. There's a channel, Jack Canfield. Um, but all of our courses, online courses, and our uh, books and so forth. In the book, The Success Principles, which I'll just hold up so everyone sees what it looks like, you can go to Amazon.com. I consider this the, the Bible of success. You'll notice it's a little thick, but it literally it's like a, a textbook for how to be successful. It'll teach you the principles and the techniques you need to do in the order you need to do them. We talked about that combination lock. So this is the combination lock to unlock success in any area of your life. We sold a million and a half copies of that book all over the world. And everyone who does it within a year or two, they've doubled their income, started businesses, magazines, got out of abusive relationships, all the good things that you want to do to be a mover and a shaker. Got you. And we'll make sure we drop a link to that book, um, that book and the Chicken Soup for the Soul books um, in, the, in, in the description when we release this video. So thank you so much. Thank you, my friend. Take care, Sean. Yeah, you be well. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. You're inspiring more people than you realize. Okay, my friend. Take care. Love you. Be well. Love you. All right. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.